Hey folks, it's NACA. So I'm doing a, a lecture on ER rashes. This is uh, ER rashes part, uh, which is French for one. Uh, one? Part one, whatever, okay. I'm more of a Spanish speaker. So this is our outline. We're gonna go through first the, morphology, the overall morphology of rashes. I think generally speaking, we're not very good at describing ER rashes. Everything is macula papular regardless, <laughs> um, which is wrong. Then we're gonna go over the modified Lynch algorithm. We'll get into what that is a little bit later, and then we'll go through maculopapular rashes, which everyone apparently knows, and petechial and perforate rashes. And then we'll finish up with uh, conclusions and recommendations for just how to document and approach ER rashes. So the dreaded, uh, okay. Who wants to start off? What's A? Yeah, sure. Anything else more descriptive? So patch. So that's essentially right. Macule flash patch. So a macule is it's a basically circumscribed lesion. It's macules are flat. Um, patches are also flat. Macules are less than one centimeter. Patches are greater than one centimeter. All right. What about B? That's macule. Wrong. Uh, that's actually well. I mean, no. It's actually just just a papule. So uh, papules are solid raised lesions that are less than one centimeter, less than one centimeter in diameter. What about C? It's kind of an easy one. Nodule. Okay. Um, nodules, solid raised lesions, one centimeter or larger in diameter. D. Any guesses? Someone said black. I said black, and that's what it is. Um, circumscribed elevation of skin, one centimeter or larger in diameter. It can also be a confluence of papules. E? Yep. Um, the name pretty much uh, gives that away. Um, circumscribed area of skin containing pus. F? Give it away, sorry. It's petechiae. If F is petechiae, G is, if it's not blanching, yes, purpura. H, smaller version of I, of I, which is belay. Good. All right. So now we'll get into. Okay. <clears throat> so two EM docs at uh, Mount Sinai. Um, Thomas Nguyen. That's uh, Vince's cousin. I'm lying. It's not Vince's cousin. And Jessica Friedman came up with this uh, modified Lynch algorithm. It's basically a systematic approach to approaching um, um, undifferentiated ER rashes. Um, and they basically, they break, well, I'll just show you what it is. They, they, they divide up rashes into morphology first and then in terms of like sick contacts, travel history, they kind of make it a little bit, a little goof proof. All right, so this is the modified Lynch algorithm. So we're going to talk about, since this is uh, part one of the lecture, we're going to talk about just this section. All right, so let's start. So starting with macular papillary, they break this up into central and peripheral. Frankly, the rashes that we'll talk about, a lot of them can be both central and peripheral. I think this just kind of makes it easier, prettier. Um, but yeah, so not all of them are just going to be central. Not all of them are peripheral. There's definitely some overlap between where the rashes are occurring. So first, we'll start with um, viral xanthoms and uh, drug reactions. So most of these, you if you're going to treat them, you're treating them symptomatically, topical steroids, topical antihistamines. Like I said before, these are not always central. You can have facial involvement. Um, they can involve your extremities. Um, mucosal involvement tends to be rare and also kind of a bad sign. Um, and it often spares um, like skin folds except in this. Um, so I put this on, I actually saw this case in, in medical school. Um, it's symmetric drug-related intratriginous and flexural xanthum, formerly known as baboon syndrome. It's typically seen in adult males that are allergic to penicillin. Um, and it also seems to affect the, the popliteal aspect of the knee, predominantly, as well as the buttock, but typically it's the, the popliteal. Okay, so just kind of another weird one. 
um, drug related drug reaction with eosinophilia, eosinophilia excuse me, and systemic symptoms. So it's a diffuse erythematous rash, typically involves the face. It could very well look like anaphylaxis, except that, well, um, there is a, a drug component to this. There's a two week latency between uh, drug exposure and the skin eruption. Typically, the drug is like an anti epileptic, carbamazepine, phenytoin, um, like mood stabilizers, I think allopurinol also is on here. Um, and typically, patients will present with liver involvement, like LFTs, they could even have renal involvement. Um, like with any drug related reaction, basically stop the offending agent um, and give systemic steroids if they look pretty bad. And it's a pretty significant mortality risk with this. All right, so next. So maculopapular rashes, patients that don't have sick contacts and didn't take any drugs. So we're thinking of things like Lyme, arboviruses, which uh, like dengue would be one of them, um, and pterias rosea, which you might see. So for Lyme, you know, you have the classic erythema migrans. It's a targetoid lesion. Um, you treat it with doxy or ceftriaxone in the event of like an allergy or for person, a patient's pregnant, you want to give ceftriaxone. For dengue, you're asking about travel history. Um, typically, the rash starts um, central and moves out to the extremities, but not always. Fever, myalgias. Laboratory-wise, you'll see um, thrombocytopenia as well as um, increased LFTs. The treatment is supportive unless patients develop um, hemorrhagic dengue fever, which has a 50% mortality rate. Um, I mean, this isn't endemic really to the United States, so we don't have to worry about this unless you're practicing abroad. And the pinarias rosea has that classic herald patch. A lot of times it'll actually be mistaken for a ringworm initially, but then the patients will come back with this. It won't always look like a Christmas tree, but they'll kind of like explode with rashes over their torso or their back. And again, this is you know, topical treatment. These are, not these are not patients that you're, they're not coming in looking to like toxic appearing, essentially. Now we'll talk about peripheral lesions, but again, some of these can occur centrally. Meningococcal, hand, foot, and mouth. Specifically people with um, sick contacts, I guess, as well. So just one thing to note, a lot of times when we think of meningococcal disease, we think of TTKI and purpura only, but the initial rash could actually be something that looks like a viral exanthem. So it could be a maculopapular rash to start off. Um, but these patients will present pretty toxic appearing. They'll have fever, obviously, if they have meningeal involvement, they'll have nausea, headache, uh, vomiting, but very high fevers, obviously. And early treatment with ceftriaxone or chlor chloramphenicol if they're allergic to ceftriaxone. Okay. And then, so now for patients that don't necessarily have sick contacts, um, and you want to think of, and they're coming in with a maculopapular rash, and it's peripheral nature, Rocky Mountain spotted, we know that it affects like the wrists and the ankles, as well as the palms and the soles of the feet, and then other tick-borne um, illnesses like Ehrlichia, Rickettsia, and um, frankly, Lyme can also prevent, uh, present with like a peripheral targetoid lesion or another, mac like a diffuse maculopapular rash elsewhere, as aside from central. Um, and then for non-tick-borne Ill illnesses or patients that haven't traveled, you want to consider eryth erythema multiforme, which also is a targetoid lesion. Um, the, I guess the worst form of this is uh, Steven Johnson syndrome, um, but we'll talk about that in the next lecture. That as well as like toxic shock. Um, and then secondary syphilis affects the palms and soles. Um, and again, it's just like a macular papular rash. Um, So for Rocky Mountain uh, spotted, same thing with meningococcal. A lot of times we think that this is just petechiae, but it can actually again present with like just early macules and will look like a, like a viral exanthem. Obviously the giveaway is the location of the rash. Like I said, wrists, ankles, palms, and soles. Um, but a lot of patients actually might not even present with uh, fever. So this is where like your travel history comes into play. And now, um, so for particular rashes, we covered, actually we covered a, a number of these um, dealing with Rocky Mountains and dengue as well as we can talk about typhus, but um, if someone has purpura and it's palpable, you want to think about the different, vas like different vasculitis, um, vasculitis, as you say. Church Strauss, um, Sturge, uh, not Church Strauss, um, what are some other ones? Wegener's, um, endocarditis also um, gives a palpable purpura. Um, 
non-palpable perpetrators when I think of ITP and TTP. The TTP patients are going to look far sicker. They're going to come in, they'll have like renal involvement, altered mental status, high fevers, um, and the different treatments are there. ITP, you're going to treat that with steroids, TTP, plasmapheresis. Um, and I know there was a pediatric rash um, lecture that was given, so we're not going to go over like rubella really. Um, or like a lot of those uh, particular rashes that occur in children. Um, so, let's see, diffuse um, disseminated gonorrhea can present as a particular rash, but a lot of those will actually progress to a, like a pustular rash. And we'll cover that in the next lecture as well. All right. So, frankly, with fatigue, yeah, you, s you see one, you've kind of seen them all. The main point is that it doesn't blanch. Um, let's just check for blanching. Maculopapular lesions will always blanch. Okay, so rashes account for a decent percentage of our ER visits per year, so I think it's important to at least be able to appropriately document them and describe them to consult services if you need to speak with them. Um, the modified Lynch algorithm is helpful, but I mean, obviously you can kind of use your brain a little bit in terms of, you know, to be able to describe the rash, has it progressed, has it, have they traveled, you don't necessarily need to adhere to this um, to that particular algorithm, but I figure since it's ER driven, it was made by you know it was derived by uh, ER physicians, it might be pretty helpful. But the main thing for us is is the patient sick or not sick. Um, if they're sick, is the is the rash um, a manifestation of some sort of systemic disease that you're not really catching? Um, is, you know these are patients obviously that you're not going to send home. So really, it's does the patient look toxic appearing or not? Um, and obviously, for the toxic appearing patients that have diffuse rashes, they're going to need to be admitted to ICU or a burn unit. Great. Thanks.